Composable concurrency tasks. In five minutes. In five minutes. Hey everybody, so as Corey said, I'm from 201 Creative and I just moved to Berlin recently, so I was really excited. This is my first time at Emberfest not having to have jet lag and fly over the ocean, so it's been pretty awesome. So uh, I wanna talk about uh, composable Ember concurrency tasks, like my title said. So I've been working on a project recently where there were a few different kind of add-ons that I pulled in uh, that kind of helped make my life easier on the project. One is, has anyone seen this in progress? It's an NPM library for doing progress bars. Nobody, okay, it's pretty, you'll see it in a second. So that's one thing I was gonna use pretty much for every API call in my app. And then another thing I wanted to use was Ember CLI Flash, has anyone used that? That's, yeah, a few more people. So this is good for showing Flash errors. So combined, you know, if I have, uh, say, some simple API action and then I have a uh, error, this is kind of what it looks like. Maybe you can kind of see at the top, there's that blue bar across the top and then if there's an error, then it shows up in the Flash message. So this is how I uh, implemented that using uh, Ember concurrency tasks. So I have two different services that handle those two different aspects. There's, uh, for the error handling, I use flash messages, and for uh, the progress bar, I just used, a, I made a progress service. So I call start, I have a try catch for my action. If it fails, I put the error in the flash messages, and then I make sure the progress dot done happens in the finally, whether or not it was successful. So I really like this pattern. It was nice using Ember concurrency, but this is like a CRUD app I'm working out with a lot of forms, so I kept copying and pasting this code and copying and pasting this code. So I was thinking like, there's gotta be a way to do maybe higher order Ember concurrency tests to kind of wrap some of this behavior so I could reuse it. So what did I do? So that, this is my goal, basically. I wanna make kind of a helper that makes this a bit more concise. So I Googled it. That's the first thing you do, right? Wrapping Ember concurrency tasks. I wasn't really sure what to Google. It was hard to find stuff, but eventually I did find an issue on the repo. So there's this PR. It actually got merged in 117 um, to basically, it was a very small change to Ember concurrency that made some of this possible. So if you look here, this is the diff in Ember concurrency. So the task function, that's the very important, uh, basically reference to the function that will actually get called when you perform the task, was previously stored on, on line 368 as kind of a private local variable in that function, so there was no way to access it from the outside. This changed it so the task function is now a, a property on this, on the object, which is the task property, so you can actually access it uh, later on. And a big hint in how to use this was in the test. So this test is basically saying, here's, I am able to override the task, uh, the original task function. So you can see this example here, uh, let's see, what's this doing? Line seven is the key part. This is similar to things we sometimes do when we want to mock uh, things in a, in a test, for example. So you store the original task function in some other variable. Then you, you reset the task function uh, property on the actual property object to be something else. And then you can, on line 12, you can apply or execute that original function. So I basically took this idea and I did, basically made this wrapper for my app. So this is it. Uh, the progress task function. So on that first line, you know, I do store, I create the task property. I store the task function in the original task function uh, variable. Uh, there's two things I have to do here. I wanted to get rid of all those injects. I didn't want two injects for every component where I use this uh, action. So basically inside here, I use get owner to look up the progress service and the flash messages service. I see some head shaking, but whatever, you know, it works. Uh, <laughs> And yeah, so I'm able to use this, made my code a lot more concise and a bunch of different components. Um, you know, I got this two-liner. Uh, it handles the progress bar, it, happens, it handles the error messaging. One question you might be thinking about is how does this work with error handling? Oh, by the way, this is the original diff in my, uh, in my uh, component, just one of them. So it made things a lot more concise. Uh, one, yeah, so one other question you might be thinking is what if you want to do some other error handling? Um, so here's an example, basically, the wrapper is really on the outside, it really is a wrapper, so that any errors will get thrown, you can kind of think of it as inside the function, so I can catch the error inside my uh, custom function that's passed in as long as I re-throw it and allow the flash message to, uh, to do its thing. So in this example, I've yield a model.save. If there's an error, in this case, I wanna do model.rollback attributes, maybe in this situation I wasn't actually using change sets or something. Uh, so I still have to do the rollback and then I re-throw the error so that um, the, it can still do its thing of pushing it in the flash message. So I think this is pretty cool. You know, I think Ember concurrency has been a really nice thing to work with, and I think I kind of want to see what the community comes up with of other ways we could create maybe higher order or reusable uh, tasks. So I'm really curious if anyone has other ideas, of maybe other use cases, I'd, be, I'd love to talk to you about it. I think there are a few different ways to implement this, and another is using the events that are already built into Ember concurrency. That would be another way. But again, this was a cool exploration, so thank you very much.
I got five seconds. <laughs>